Models. I'm Philip Flory. A uh, big warm welcome to all the new members. Um, just remember, if you're going into the forum, you need to use the same username as you do for the main site, okay? Because a lot of you are trying to get into the forum and you can't get in because you're using aliases uh, with avatars and things like that. So, real names, guys, uh, into the forum makes things so much easier. And once you're in, you'll see all about it. So, as I said, if you haven't joined up, there seems to be a lot of you not going directly into the forum, please do go into the forum because Everything we do here is literally just a small percentage of it. There's so much more going on in the forum. There's thousands of members in there. Lots and lots of posts going on. Obviously, the group builds, the SIGs that you hear us talk about, and obviously, you'll be seeing a little bit later on, and things like that. So that's where you need to be, okay? So if you haven't, you really are missing out, and it's time to get in there. So this week, um, to be honest, it's a bit manic. Uh, we've got quite a few things on the go, and I'm sort of getting a bit snowed under here because we've got the Seahawk build on the go, we've got the F-15, we've got the Sea Vixen, and they're all getting to that point where they're all sort of coming together. So you've got lots of bits all around, like down here we've got all under the carriage gear doors. Um, the Sea Vixen here is ready to go into sort of weathering with a wash and everything. So we've got weapons things around this area, and it just gets a little bit cluttered. Um, so we really haven't been able to sort of push through as fast as I would like to. Um, but anyway, the F-15 is over here um, and it's ready for final assembly. Just got the last few bits to go onto that one and that one would be completed. So part thinking now, what is it now up on the site? Is it six or seven? Something like that is up on the site now. No, I think it's actually part eight uh, thinking about it, it's up on the site now, which will get you basically to that stage uh, with the deckling and everything else like that, which we'll talk about in a moment. Sea Vixen, uh, this is on the speed build, so this is only on part five, and we're already to this point. Um, and as you can see, really happy with how the deckling turned out. It's a bit glossy at this at the moment. It needs a bit of a satin finish so we can actually get the um, the weathering to go onto this. But really happy with the way the chipping's coming out underneath now, looking really, really nice. As I said, we've toned it back, we've done lots and lots of things with this one. Um, a lot of you are querying it, uh, it's, to be honest, you're a little bit behind, that's the reason. I know some of you are saying, um, you know, last week we saw a little bit about this one, that's because you're basically about a week behind. Because what I'm trying to do is get ahead, so if we ever have a problem, um, like we've had in the past, with obviously the internet, things like that, then obviously I've got enough in the bag, so to speak, to keep you guys going. So. We've got two hour, uh, will be an over an hour of builds with this one as well. So as I said, the Sea Vixen will get you up to completely in the paint stage. The paint stage is finished in this part that will be up there now. And then part six will actually cover a little bit what you saw last week. And then certainly the deckling and everything else like that as we move through. So, because I haven't been able to do anything, I'm sort of winging it by ear here. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I've been asked recently. Uh, first of all, on deckling. Um, two things, uh, there's going to be um, a few new videos which will be up on the site next week which I will cover. This is going to be in the new um, tutorials area which will be a lot easier to find. So I know some of you have had trouble finding various things. A couple of emails this week, keep like, asking about, about scribing, polishing, things like that. Where are they? They're tucked in the area. I'm going to bring them out to be a bit more of a bigger thumbnail so you can see exactly what's on there and exactly where it is so it's a lot easier. But if you are looking, it is actually on the right hand side menu. Okay, and uh, it's down on that side and you've got one that says video builds, uh, photo builds and tutorials. Go to tutorials, there's one on modeling, click on the modeling one and they're all listed down there. Now the new ones, I am going to be filming a lot of them next week, hence I'm getting ahead on this so I can spend all next week sorting that out. Um, so we're going to be doing, the first one is on gluing and I will be talking through basically what I use most okay so as you probably all know we've we've done videos on this one before i tend to use tamiya extra thin glue and certainly mr C uh, cement s mr cement s because you can get it readily in the uk tamiya extra thin i think is just about filtering into the uk now they've got rid of all the problems of legalities over if it's an industrial chemical or a hobby chemical and things like that so they're the two glues i use but i'll be teaching you or showing you in detail about joining parts because gone are those days where we've had tubes of glue and and, uh, needle glues and things like that they do have their place in the hobby still but trust me with this stuff if you are coming back to it you'll see a million more times better there's no mess there's no glue oozing out and, oh, anyway you'll see all about that one then we're going to be moving through to filling and sanding so we'll be using um, as I tend to use here 
everything from super glue through to um, things like millipart uh, for big areas for sanding and filling, right the way through to your traditional fillers, tubes of fillers, and then we'll be talking about the ones which we've used in a lot of these builds, things like Mr. Surfaces as filler for fine areas, things like that. And then we'll be talking about how to sand them back, the best techniques to do that, the best tools to do it, and everything else like that. So we've got that one coming up. Then we'll be talking about rescribing and a couple of new tools which I'm hoping will be in this week coming. I've ordered a couple of different new things for me to have a play with as well and talk about rescribing, the easiest ways to do it. Um, and little things like rescribing over filler, it's never that easy. If you go over a soft filler, as I call it, like Mr. Surfaces and things like that, you always go too deep. If it's super glue filler, you can't scratch it. So I'll be teaching you all about that one and using saw blades and things like that, hopefully. Um, and then each one of these little tutorials that go through will only be about 15 minutes. So you won't have to, you know, sit through hours of me, perhaps like when I'm doing the video build, or try and find it. It should be a lot easier to do. Then after that, we'll be looking at decaling, which to be honest, you're going to get a clip of it in a moment because I've already done that one when we were talking about the F15. A couple of little tips and tricks which you'll see in a moment about that little one but said the full thing of that will be on the F15 and there's an even longer version of that which will be on about decaling uh, which will be on the site next week and then we'll be talking of things like um, finishes and stuff like that. Um, there's a bit of a gap I know with obviously painting we'll talk about that in a moment but finishes i.e. your flats, your satins okay and your gloss finishes best way to do it's the difference between lacquer finishes and then obviously acrylic finishes and all different things like that so hopefully these little 15 minute bites will be nice little reference things you can go back to or watch once, get the general gist of it and you can move through. Then obviously the airbrushing one, um, as you've seen, it got a little bit updated last year, we did the new one and I'll be covering a few better angles with it because certain things it's very hard to show you guys exactly what I'm doing but now we can get in the spray bay and if you've seen it now we have the overhead cam which looks right in especially when we've been doing the C Vixen and with this uh, with the camo work on the F15 you know you could see exactly what I was doing good quality nice sharp where well, the other ones are always a little bit I can see roughly what I'm up to but now with the better camera angles we're going to redo it so again you can go back as a reference type thing with it so really all these things are getting into that situation where also we can move through and pick out specific areas which will be half hour ones then and that will be a half hour one on doing cockpits okay it'll be a half hour one on doing engines it'll be a half hour one on scratch building and things like that so we've got a very broad reference library which will be hours of video you can watch and refer back to and then also like we've been doing the Civics and build now whereas you think the F15 build here we're up to uh, well it's going to easily surpass part 10 parts on that one this particular one so it's five hours of video really this particular one I reckon we're probably going to get done in seven parts so obviously it gets the part count down a lot more it's a lot faster hopefully you guys are enjoying it more because we're moving through the build so we've got no boring bits and everything else like that now as we move through so anyway without further ado here's a little bit on decaling the F15 this week now, um, believe it or not, I deliberately have put some silvering on this one. Okay, so by silvering, we explained it a minute ago, it's basically air being trapped underneath. Now, it's going to be quite difficult to see on camera, um, just by its nature, it's, it's quite a close thing. So what we'll do is, if it doesn't work, I'll put a still up of it anyway. So if we just move this top camera right in. Now, two types of silvering you can get. You can get, obviously, the unsightly, the the actual silver one. The other one you can get is sometimes that the decal just doesn't lay flat. It tends to wrinkle up. So we've got the two types on the go here. So if we show you what we mean, I'll just find one of the better ones. I've done it in a couple of areas. Um, as I say, let's just find a, a one I think work the best. Um, it's going to be one of these things. I'm just trying to get it to show in the light. So you might be able to see down here on this decal down here, when you move it through the, the degrees, you get it showing up on the light like there. Now obviously you want it to be down something more like this one, where you move it, you've got nothing whatsoever, okay? But obviously when you've got this type of situation where you move it, you can catch it like there. The camera can lock in, there we go. It's a good example there. It's very, very bright. Now, all you want to do is basically get into that ink, when we get actually under it, to get that air out of it. So you still want to use the solution. So for obviously, in our case, we're using thinners, uh, acrylic thinners. But if you've got your setting solution, that's what you want to do. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can come along with like a, a pin, 
uh, like we've got here, which is a needle, and just gently stab it. Okay, well the other thing you can do is physically slit the decal. Now you don't want to slit it so you're down into the paintwork and causing a groove, but what you do want to do is obviously release some of it. So what I tend to do is lay the blade over it and just gently come along. Now make sure it's totally dry all of these. You don't want to be doing this when it's still wet, but if you draw across you'll feel it cracking as you go through. Okay, so that's like that. And then you can come along, making sure I've got a clean brush here. Okay, and we're just going to pop some more over the top, and you should see it all disappear. Now, if you've still got a little bit showing there, just literally come along with your knife and hook over the top. Okay, but just don't overdo it. Okay, and then the same thing leave it to it you should see it pucker up again it will then you know look nasty and everything else but if we leave that one now you can probably see already although you've got the wet on it the silver has gone because obviously the thinness is underneath the thinness will evaporate a lot better than water will okay and obviously it'll soak in and things like that and there we go job done now the other one you can get is quite unsightly again this will be just something to show if catching it in the light but you might be able to see down here Best way to get it in. So it's not very noticeable on camera, but trust me, to the naked eye, it is very noticeable. You might be able to see we've got this wrinkling all around this area, and it's specifically noticeable on the carrier film below the eagle's head and running down. And I'm just trying to get the camera to see it. Now, trouble with that is there's no silvering as such anywhere. It looks absolutely fine, but I can you can feel it. It's actually rough to the touch. So this is the, the next tip. It's one of those slightly dodgy ones, shall we say, but what you want to use is a sanding stick. Nothing, or a sanding sponge is probably better than the stick. Stick will be too harsh. So use a sanding sponge that's slightly worn. Don't come in with anything with too sharp because you'll rip it to pieces, okay? But what we actually do is have it on here like this. Come along with your sanding sponge and very lightly just run it over the top. Now we're not trying to rub it off, all we're trying to do is rip open the tops of it and make it a little bit smooth. If we just use another one. Okay, because all we're trying to do is pop open all the tops and flatten them out. Okay, so don't put any pressure, just let the sponge do all the work go across this is a way I used to actually do uh, weathering decals is actually physically sand them okay but as you can see you're not trying to get in now if you've got a decal that's hanging off the side just come in with a sanding sponge and that will cut it without tearing it if you come in with a knife and try and cut it up you can rip it and do it now have a feel feel how it is okay feeling a lot nicer okay just like so, and then we're just gonna come in with a polisher. So we've just got a standard sort of polishing sponge. Just gonna polish over the top. And that'll get rid of all those high side areas. And we're just gonna do this back. And everything else, okay. If you feel it, we should be nice and smooth. We've got a couple of little ones around this feet area. So we're just gonna wet my finger and give it a wipe down. <coughs> and then again, just looking for my bigger brush, can't find it. Okay, I'm just going to come in and re wet and set the decal over the top. Because what will happen is again it will wrinkle up, it'll pucker up, and then hopefully this time when it goes down, it will go down very flat because it's got it out. But what it is on larger decals, sometimes. The better decals, shall we say, they tend to conform a little too well and sometimes they don't exactly go flat afterwards. Same thing if you're doing tricky little ones like these on the wing tips uh, that fold round and wrap around onto the other side. Set the top half, leave it hanging off and then put obviously your setting solution and it will naturally droop down. As soon as it droops down, come in with a brush and just flick it over 
and wipe it down and you should be fine with it. Okay, so there we go, that's on my, um, next week it will be properly up on the site as a tutorial section, as I said. I'm gonna sit down next week and do that because I've got enough of these in the bag to have the week off and sort around. The other thing as well, obviously I've got to sort out because we've got the members meet here, which will be next Sunday. Yes, I've already spoken about it to the guys. We will be videoing, so I'll have the overhead camera on and I'll stick that camera you're on there somewhere else and probably the other camera somewhere else in the studio here. And then hopefully you can see us all what we got up to and we'll do a little bit of a montage of members if you want. Obviously you can, then watch that on the main site as well uh, about that. Steve's obviously got his next Friday, uh, sorry, next Friday, next Sunday. So it's a week on Sunday. Steve's got his um, as well up in the north of England. We've obviously got ours in the southwest. So we should have a lot of fun. Obviously there'll be teas and coffees and everything else here. And we can all sit around the table and generally chat and everything else like that. So, because um, obviously we've got a lot on the go here, we'll get catch up with the reviews and everything next week. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is uh, pop over to the forum and go through it, because we haven't looked at some of your work, and there is absolute stunning builds there this week. So let's go and have a look. Okay then guys, welcome to the site. I'm um, just gonna do a brief, quick run through just to um, clear up a couple of things on here. As I said, the video builds are all up in here. So you just literally click, there's all your video builds. Now these ones here, are all shot in HD, which is all nice and clear. These are the SD versions, which are slightly older. Um, now what happens is sometimes that when you click through, that's just assume doing like the Phantom down here, something else like that. There's so many parts to it that it doesn't like to load up particularly well um, on there, because each one of these is like 600 megabytes, um, and obviously it just fills up your cache memory straight away. So usually a quick F5 refresh should take care of that without any problems. They say you just go back up there, but all of the newer ones, I tend to break them all up a bit so they're not in too many parts. So you might find if you come down here to the Mustang, when you scroll down, you'll get down to about part seven, as you see here, and then you've got page two. This stops that problem. Now, some of the old ones I've got to go back and do because obviously it's got 10, 15 parts in some cases on there, so I need to split them up. But obviously then you just go onto page two and you can go down through them like that and obviously you just click on as normal to watch. But that's the trouble some of you have been getting, so we just want to talk about that. Okay, the store area, guys, you can get to it down here. I'm gonna change all this next week, but a lot of it is if you come in direct in here um, and perhaps you come into Sanders, you don't see the full page. So if you come up to the top area up here, give it a click and this brings you in this talks about the pricing things like that um, our US distributor our show distributor here in the UK and then obviously you can just click on them and then down here you've got the usual blurb about me using the wash and the videos and then you've got the wash itself where you can buy it and there's more videos down below there but a lot of you seem to be getting lost on this but when you've done just go back to store again and everything else and you can go through them and then the sanders obviously we've got the full sets up here like this again and you can just have it like that. But as I said, if you're coming in this way, it does cause a little bit of a problem. Pigments are discontinued, guys. I'm sorry we don't have any left. Um, something we might look about sometime in the future, but certainly for now, uh, we'll be staring, you know, keeping rather away from them. Okay, the tutorials we spoke about, this is where it's gonna change over here. It will be the same thing. You'll still get two options for basic modeling or the airbrushing. Now this is almost the same as the DVDs, apart from you obviously you get the older ones here as well as the newer ones. So if you come over to basic modeling, these are the ones which are gonna get a bit of a facelift. So there you go, there's me looking very young. Okay, the Hawk Bill, which is a very basic one, doing resin cockpits working on there. It is an old one, don't get me wrong this one, but it's got a wealth of information. That's why I'm gonna leave them on there. It's not just a case of like, you know, going around and, and taking them out, but it's 45 um, minutes. Welcome. We're gonna do a detailed um, work on cockpits for this one. God, I sound terrible. But as I said, full screen tends to be a bit horrible because it's not in the, uh, the actual um, full HD format and it doesn't like being stretched, but certainly in there just like that. And you think, wrong button. And you think that was recorded many, many years ago. Some of the newer ones down here, one of the guys asking about polishing canopies. This obviously is in full HD, um, but we're going to be upgrading all of these and giving them a good sort out all next week where I'll be working through them and everything else. But as you said, you'll notice straight away here, obviously it's a lot clearer, no problems at all. So there we go, that's all about that. Okay, so there we go, that's really what's gonna change. So there'll be a few more things down here for the store, and up here we'll get a bit of a revamp. Um, guys asking about the group build videos, where are they? They're over here on the right-hand side. Um, to be honest, I don't think I've updated this. There's some more to go in here, but you've got the Hornet ones, all the, the ones, I can't remember how many we've got down here, Tomcat. Oh, we're almost there. I've just gotta put a couple more in there, which I'll do over the weekend. But they're all the old builds we did. 
So if you like the ones to the music and doing the videos and stuff like that, this is what all these are about. Again, two types of format. You've got obviously some of these aren't so bad, um, but some of them the video quality is a little bit naff. Okay, so again, if it's in widescreen form, it'll be HD. If it's a box, if it's a square, something like that, then it'll be in the standard format. And there we go. So that's how that one works. So if we make our way over to the forum. Okay, so over here in the forum, as you can see, we've got all the usual things going on. There's a couple of little things I want to talk about um, as we move through. Okay, first of all, we've got a couple of builds which took my eye this week going through. First of all, we've got Daniel's one. Now, this is a 170 second kit, which is absolutely fantastic because, quite frankly, lovely bit of weathering on here when you think of it for the scale. Okay, if it was 148, 130 seconds, you think, yeah, it's a lovely build, nice clean. But 170 second, that is not at all easy to pull off. Lovely clean build, nice little bit of weathering on there, as you can see, all the way through. So, well done to him. Another one took my eye, this is Gareth's beautifully done um, Tornado. Now this is the Tonka in-flight refueling. Lots of things that are different on this one that really took my eye. First of all, the weathering, it's got that very nice dead flat finish to it, okay? It's got the type of finish which gives it great scale. And when we say scale, it just looks perfect in it. If you took that and stick it on a green screen and cut it out, it wouldn't look out of place absolutely anywhere. Second things that took my eye, obviously it's refueling, so it's in flight, and he's done a beautiful job on the drag on the drogue here, coming off from the tanker in, and also he's gone along and put on the here the training rounds onto it and things like like that really really nice touches so if we go through you can see underneath here beautifully done working in and the build quality itself is exceptional it's just that when you see it like this it's absolutely stunning so well done to that one Good old Eric here has done a beautiful job on the new Kitty Hawk. I think it's Kitty Hawk, yeah. Um, the uh, FA35, the B. This is going to be the V stall version. Okay, it's the new one out. I think they are doing the A and the C is coming out as well as a kit. Um, the kit itself, I have heard, isn't exactly a brilliant kit. It's got a few problems with it, but certainly beautifully done. Very nice, this weathering area at the back where you've got the difference between the panels working on for the RAM system and the receiver system all around here is beautifully done. Nice job on the nozzle system and getting that to rotate down because again it's a bit of a, a hash to do it all and everything else so as you can see he did an absolute stunning job on that one so congratulations to him our very own Stefan he's a bit of a wizard doing these he tends to go quiet for a bit and then comes back with something massively fantastic again we've actually got here this is the Academy 1350 uh, HMS War Spite okay well, you know, I've words sort of fail you on this because of the scale effect this has got is absolutely beautiful. Say so the lovely work on the deck and chains, the guns, and uh, all that wiring that goes on for this rigging at the top is again, it's absolutely beautifully done. And you've got lovely little details that catch your eye on this one. Notably for me, I must admit, it was around the stern of the ship, all the work, but even all the lifeboats, you know, and everything, I'd say lifeboats, tenders, a um, bit big for that. But just down here with this rigging work around the back and everything else, the flag flowing in the breeze and everything else, beautifully done, nicely on a nice display stand and everything else. Again, fantastic detailed work. And what we're talking about here is this scale business. It's got absolutely brilliant scale appeal on it. So well done to him on that one. Okay, this has been a little favourite of mine that I've been watching a while, and it will come out for non-members to see this particular build very, very soon. We're going to get it out on the main site. But um, Gary's been absolutely working on this one now for many, many moons, okay, and it's done an absolutely phenomenal job. Again, I'm picking all these out through scale because I think they look great for scale. Too often you can see models and dioramas and they've got glossy bits or they're too flat and something else, so they just don't sit right in their environment, okay. But this one, if you weren't to see the backdrop and the base, yeah, you know, the edges of the base, it could be absolutely anywhere. But as you can see, fantastic job. Um, I spoke to him earlier about it, and I, I wrote on the post about it down below when he put these up, that it's the tiny things that uh, make the difference. No smirking at the back, okay? But it's the little things that really 
just stand out and make it look great. So it is things like this telephone wire at the top with the dollies, you know, the old fashioned ones. Shoot these with a BB gun years ago. Um, but they were the things to do, you know. Okay, little things like the boxes, the cardboard boxes have great scale effect. Again, beautifully folded, put together, the water bottles, everything else like that. It just sits very, very right. The dust seems to be in scale almost, something like that. So you're getting overexcited again now. But say, the K-bar system down here, you know, having the dinks out of it, okay, it's in the resin and everything else, but the weathering's not, so it's got the dust blow up all around it and everything else like that, and the chunks and scrapes and the dry brushing that's gone into it. It is all beautifully done. Everything just down to dust around the windows, the crew figures, absolutely fantastic, down to the floor itself, you know, all lovely done. And the little bits I like, obviously the crew are well done, very well painted, is the little touches, like the, uh, the Doritos bag, the dime bar, things like that in the cab, and the rubbish, which sounds funny, but it's just things like the posters peeling off at the edges. Fantastic little touch. And this rubbish here is literally a diorama in itself. The work that would have gone in down here to get dust on the bin bags, the torn open bin bags, and everything else like that. The paper where it's perhaps it's been wet in the past and it's peeling apart to getting all this to lay down in scale effect is absolutely phenomenal work really really it's one of those ones you look around and you see a hundred things every time like the step detail down here beautifully done and everything else and there's old Roland Rat down there as well and I haven't even seen that and I've looked at this bit of work about a hundred times now and I've just spotted him so it's one of those things every time you'll see something a little bit different so congratulations for him for that. That will be a full build up on the site just as soon as I get around to doing it. Okay, next up, I love the clean builds as well. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for weathering and dirtiness and everything else, but sometimes you get a nice clean build that just pops out. So James has done a great one here. It's the Revel um, Shelby Mustang. This is the 124th scale. Very nice work all over it, and it just sits right. Again, you know... <sighs> I was speaking to our Mr. Jellyman earlier because he's working on a gloss car at the moment and we were saying about sometimes if you over gloss it doesn't look right but here's a classic example it's got a satin finish to it but because of its scale it sits right but there again it's got chrome units down the bottom and things like that and as I say get a bit of lighting onto it absolutely fantastic so well done to him for that one okay into the muddy section okay one to three fifty I presume this who's is this is the Dragon Panther G Okay, nice weathering again. It's got all the smuck, all the, the bits, the nasty chunks, everything else like that, as you can imagine, all over this one. Beautifully done on a nice little diorama, something simple but very, very effective. Having it on a small little diorama like that, it breaks it up and makes it look lovely. But I just like the weathering on this one. It all sort of sits right. It seems to be okay. It's all in scale, everything else. And it's just one of those builds you look at and you think, yeah, nice old build on that one. So, word on Tim on that one. Okay, <clears throat> still on the old armour thing. This one took my eye as well. Sorry, Paul. Paul Marshall's done this one. He's gone through about the weathering techniques on this one, as you can see, moving through. So we've got the rust and grime going down first, and then the camera work going over the top, and then bleeding it through. And as I said, it just gives it that nice sort of worn, torn look to the actual model, everything else like that, and gives it great weight and scale. But just love the, the way the actual the patterning and the scraping is all done. It all seems to be just fit very, very nicely. And when you're dealing with greens and stuff like that, it is so hard to get things to sort of stand out right. Right the way through to this rubber took my eye as well, because it just looks like rubber, and that's the beautiful thing about it. So congratulations to him on that one. Fantastic job. Right, okay, popping back into the forum, a um, couple of things we need to talk about. We've got obviously various group builds and everything else going on at the moment, amongst everything else. Where are we? We're down here somewhere. Uh, do, do, do. No, keep going down. So at the moment, we have, we've got the Tamiya out of the box SIG. Um, you've got now until my birthday, hint, hint, my birthday, 20, uh, 17th of March, aka St. Patrick's Day. Yes, my birthday is always a party night. Okay, we've got then the um, Century uh, Series Jets going on at the moment. I'm going to go through these on another day, but um, we've got some great work going on in there. The North Africa campaign is going on absolutely beautifully as well. We've got some great stuff going down in there. 24th of Feb on that, so what do you got? Just over a month? No, a month yesterday or today if you're doing it like now. Okay, X-Plane stuff going on on here. To be honest, I haven't been in here. I'm terrible, I know, so I'm just going to have a quick look. So, um, space. this is the egg one, which, thinking of which, we've got the egg plane SIG will be back it's our annual mad thing that we do every year 
great work going on on there, as you can see, getting through it. And they are just so much fun, those little eggplants. And yes, Melly will be doing another one, God help us. Um, right the way through, uh, I was following this one, but I haven't kept up with it. This is the um, Cylon Raider. If I remember, we've got the LED set in this one. Sorry, my internet, as you can see, is um, pants. <clears throat> come along, come along, come along, come on. But as you can see, detailed work on the kit. I haven't seen this kit before, so it's nice to see somebody else do it. There it is. I thought it was. So um, you have got the LED set that he's putting into this one. So if I just scroll down, I'm hoping we can see. There we go. There's all the LED work going in there, showing you exactly how to do it and everything else like that. Beautifully done. And then obviously all the lighting set and everything going in all the way through. See, look, I'm doing this now for my own personal amusement. Talk about yourselves a minute, it's just I haven't seen this. <laughs> so anyway, it's working absolutely beautifully in there, going through. Uh, and we've got other things going down here. We've got Battlestar, Galactica, Vipers, everything else. So we've got lots of things happening in there for you to take part and join in. Again, if you haven't signed up for the forum, why not get in here? Okay, we've got the Whirlyberg stuff going on at the moment. We've got quite a few in here. We've got, you name it, we've got everything from uh, Revel, New Lynxes, Heinz. We've got lots of Heinz, the Wessex, lovely little kit, this one. Um, have a quick look at Gary's, what we've got a moment. As you say, um, if you're new to doing SIGs, group builds, things like that, basically, quick rundown, all you've got to do is take a photo of the box to prove you haven't done it, okay? It's not even started yet. No, we don't need the newspaper next or anything else. We just take your word for it, okay? And then you basically just show us how you're going through and doing it. So you don't have to show us everything. I'm not on about doing something like I do for you, okay? Or one of the team perhaps might do in the, in the you know, photo builds, things like that. But really, as detailed or as not as you like, just talk about how you're doing it, what you're adding, any scratch building like this, beautifully work going on inside. Nice clean photos as well, guys. If we can do them on a backdrop, it just makes it a lot nicer for people to look at. It's no problem doing it on your bench, just clear a bit of clutter away and everything else, but as you can see, going right the way through he's just showing exactly how he's going about it he'll be answering questions on it no doubt and people will be giving him advice as he works his way through and as i said nicely weathering up of the cockpit area loving this build it's actually a very very nice one again i'm so sorry i haven't been around the forum very much we've been caught up with everything else but as you said going through and what this is really all designed to do guys is to inspire you to perhaps have a go at it and follow somebody else's build perhaps you know you're not too sure about it you can actually ask the guy who's building it at the same time and if he doesn't know i'm sure somebody else will come up with some advice or somebody's done it or something else before and that's the whole point to doing sigs and group builds it's more supposed to be of a team gathering and a team effort together as you go right the way through rather than you just building a kit at home alone on your own showing it to your partner she says yes that's lovely the same as they always do okay and then obviously you know you come on the forum you show us we're a bit more appreciative because we know exactly what you've done to it and uh, you can show off your handiwork and if you have got any tips like this one using plastic card shims which is an old favorite of mine of doing because it just says filler there we go we've got glue going in there we'll take care of any gaps that are overly big sorry about that so we have a new function as well if you uh, haven't seen it yet talk about it on the forum if you've got a smaller picture like this what happens is now that the forum automatically resizes any photo you put up so when you click on it now you can actually have it come up as the full image as a thing you can save the image and everything else like that okay please ask anybody if you're nicking their images and you want to use them anywhere else especially okay but as you can see beautiful work on this taking care of tricky little things Scratch building at his best, definitely, especially doing stuff like this around the tail end, as you can see, working your way through, and he's answering and talking about questions as you make your way through the entire build. So there we go, guys. That's about it for this month in here. Um, I'll just confirm the end date for the Tamiya build, which we'll obviously be making our way through soon. The Tamiya group build, sorry, 17th of March. You've got 10th of March for the, uh, sorry, 3rd of March for the Century Series, 24th for the North Africa campaign, x Plains is the 31st, the Whirly Big one, uh, Gig one, it got 28th of April, so loads of time on that one. All the builds once they're done, all the final reveals end up down here. So obviously we did the Tornado one the other week, you can actually see all about the Tornadoes down in here, and you can see the photos of everyone's completed models, okay? What happens is all the builds you did of it end up going back into the system 
of doing uh, your work in progress. So if you've done work in progress for just for instance, he says, um, jet aircraft, for instance, all those ones will go back into here. So if you are working on something, obviously we've got thousands of posts in here now, it will go back in via its date. So it won't come in at the top. So if you're looking for it, you'll have to go through the system or the search system, something else like that. Just pop in, bang your keywords in and everything else and you can do it like that. So anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this little uh, scoot around the forum and everything else. Great work, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. Okay, so that's about it for this week. Great work in the forum as ever. Don't forget the SIGs and everything to get on with those guys because we say everyone's a winner on those, but we say we've got great SIGs coming up. You know, we seem to be, um, a lot of people are saying about uh, there's too many SIGs going on, things like that. Um, really, uh, you know, you don't have to do every single one. That's the point. You know, the SIGs really are bringing modelers together, okay, and talking about common interest in areas, things like that. The group builds, I know everyone gets a bit excited about because we tend to have the prizes and we make a big fuss of them, but the SIGs are just as important. But remember, also, if we're not doing a SIG that you actually, you know, want to take part in something else like that, um, for instance, there's uh, the uh, Bismarck, the new the Trumpeter 1 to 200 monster okay that obviously as a few members got together and they're doing their own buddy build version of it which is basically almost a sig but quite not quite but obviously we're obviously all still going to look at it make a fuss of it and everything else like that and it's well worth taking you know your time to take part in these things and everything else but the idea with the sig really is like-minded modelers working on a very similar subject so the sigs too tend to be very tight areas such as obviously the north africa campaign one at the moment very small, but you can do everything from, you know, different types of vehicles, track vehicles, lorries, trucks, bikes, whatever you want to do, it all still counts. As long as it's a type of vehicle that is involved in that, then it's all good. So you have got a broad spectrum, but as I say, it keeps everybody a little bit tighter and that's the ruling for that. You know, and then obviously, yeah, the Tamiya out the box build is absolutely massive at the moment. Everyone's joined that. It's going to be hundreds and hundreds of medals going out at this rate and everything else. And the standard of the work is phenomenally good. Um, and I've got some prizes already sorted out that one as well so as you said pick the ones you want to do if there are ones you don't want to do don't feel obliged you have to do it if you want to do another one and there's a couple of you talking in the forum would like to do it do it as a buddy bill you know as simple as that all of all it's all about enjoying yourselves and that's the whole point to all of this it's just a little bit of enjoyment a little bit of fun and uh, takes our mind off daily routines and things like that so that's about it for this week um, until next week happy modeling and take care